Hello, everyone. I'm Michael Letterman. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Pathogens and Immunity, and I'm here today with Khalid Alter, who is a professor at the Reagan Institute in Massachusetts, and she will be giving a, a talk at the upcoming Keystone Symposia, um, Viral Immunity and Respiratory Virus Infections, and we're here to talk about her work. So, Khalid, hello. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Nice to see you. So let me segue just a little bit into something a little more personal. You made a decision to become a scientist. What was it that drove you? That had you? Why did you make that decision instead of, say, becoming a fashion model or um, an, uh, a reporter on television? What, what made you decide to pursue a career in science? Mike, it was people like you that got me thinking about becoming a scientist. You know, it was these inspiring individuals that, you know, I had encountered all through my life that were asking really important and big questions and really enjoying the process of making those, you know, big discoveries, right? It was an opportunity to work with you. It was an opportunity to, you know, think big and to really have impact. You're you're very you're very sweet. So so let some advice for a young a young uh, eager scientist. If you have a choice between a laboratory, an established laboratory of a famous scientist that's large, filled with postdocs and 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 students, um, but may, you may not get that much attention, or a lab with a, a a young talented investigator that's very small where you can get a lot of attention. What 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 sort of direction would you think is best for, for a young trainee? Okay, so the way that I always see it, right, is that we're all snowflakes. We're all different. We're all unique, right? So if you're somebody who um, really wants to work hand in hand on a daily basis with your PI, there's no question go to the small lab, right? That is the place for you because you're going to get the personal attention. You'll build something really magical. It'll be inspirational. You will feel, you know, you're, you're getting what you need from that particular lab. There's other people, you know, that I meet every day that are just, you know, um, they just want to do it on their own. You know, they're kind of like the, I, I want to go, you know, do this on my own. I want independence. I want to make decisions. I want to take my own risks. And that really falls much more in the place of a big lab, right? Where you have the capability and maybe the flexibility to ask lots of questions from lots of people, but to really make those mistakes on your own and to make those discoveries in a little bit more of an independent way. So I think you just have to follow your heart, right? You have to follow what feels right in that environment. And I think there's not one size fits all solution to the problem. You know, we really have to find people who I always say, right, when you're looking for the best graduate school lab or the best postdoc lab, find a PI, irrespective of the size of the lab or the size of, you know, you know, their um, funding, find a PI who you get along with and who, you know, you love the way they think, right? Because that is the most important thing. You're committing to training, you know, with someone who you're going to be having conversations with all the time, people you're going to be arguing about science with, people you're going to be, mm -hmm. you know, creating and, you know, di discovering new things with um, for the next few years of your life. And so just make sure that that relationship, that is the most important relationship you invest in, I think, for that period of your training. Well, Galit, that sounds like wonderful advice. And um, it's probably time to wrap up now. This is a, a wonderful chat with you. Uh, I can't wait to see your presentation and hear it at Keystone. And uh, thanks so much for giving us some time.